So you take a chicken with a fan tail and a pink belly, and then you put a football helmet on the back of its head. Their breeding is interesting, their personalities are interesting. Some are a little more intuitive than others, some are a little more curious than others. They have several different calls. Some are soft, breeding, laying type sounds. There's like a rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> Some are loud male calls, territorial calls. It sounds sort of like a rumble up to a boom. Malios are impressive, impressive birds. Malios live in Indonesia on the island of Sulawesi. Seeing the first Malio descend out of the trees in Sulawesi was incredible. To see a wild Malio after working with them for years here at the Bronx Zoo, what a treat. WCS protects several nesting sites and operates nurseries for the safe hatch and release of Malio chicks. These protected sites are the last best chance for the species in the wild. Almost all other nesting sites are at serious risk. Their land is encroached upon, their eggs are hunted for food, so Malios are extremely rare. It's important to breed the bird here at the Bronx Zoo because it provides us an opportunity to study things we can't study as well in the wild, and that information can contribute to their conservation. Here at the Bronx Zoo, it takes a village to raise a Malio. Everybody here at the Bronx Zoo in the bird department has a hand in raising a Malio baby. Keepers here at the Bronx Zoo have to know every distinct movement or sound a Malio makes to know when they're ready to lay. They have to know the noises they make, how they dig, why they dig, when they dig, and what they're eating tells us exactly when they're going to lay. Currently have one breeding pair that produces fertile eggs, that's Malcolm and June. June, our laying female, loves peanuts. She eats them like candy. She stops eating them to signal when she's ready to lay much like crocodiles or alligators. They bury their eggs in mounds of decaying matter or in geothermic areas. Our Malios dig where we have heated sand and soil. They will actually go in, dig to the temperature they want, testing it with their mouth, and find just the right temperature to lay their egg at. Unlike other birds, Malios leave their eggs to be incubated in the ground. The adults walk off and leave them to incubate on their own. But every one of these eggs is really precious, so we don't want to take any chances. We dig them up and we incubate them so that we can control the conditions as much as possible. Our incubator is kept at a very certain temperature. Knowing just the right temperature for a Malio egg can be tricky. We've actually gone to the wild and tested wild pits, brought that data back, tweaked temperature here, tweaked humidity there, and through the years we've gotten better and better. The eggs are super cool because the shell of a Malio is so incredibly thin. You can see right through the egg, you can see the chicks, you can see the veins. Sometimes we can actually see it swimming around in the egg. When we find out we have a fertile Malio egg, everybody wants to know. Everyone's excited and waiting for it to hatch. Malios take a while to grow up. It takes a few years for them to get their beautiful peach plumage and their big cephalon and they're ready to go. We measure success by producing healthy babies. It's a learning process, but what we learn here at the Bronx Zoo informs the important conservation work in the field. We've bred thousands of different birds, but the Malios are one of the species we are most proud of.